Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, in a minute or so, we're going to sing that, that song, He Abides. But let's say, how do you believe that He abides this morning? Jesus Amen. abides. Amen. 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 Let's go before the Lord and ask Him to Amen. move in our midst this morning. Father, thank you yet again for another day that you have made, another opportunity to worship you, to come into your presence, to, to give you thanks, to thank you for everyone that's here, to thank you for that abiding presence in our lives. Hallelujah. Turn in your hymnal if you like to page 119. He abides. Page 119. I'm rich.
joining us. I know it's, uh, it's Labor Day weekend, and a lot of times people have their minds on other things. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? I made up my mind a long, long time ago that I was going to put God first in my life. And no matter what happened, I don't care what holiday it is, I don't care what gathering it is, what God wants and what God needs is important. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's important mm -hmm. to put God first. Amen. Amen. It's important to put God first. Amen. Come on in. God bless. Amen. We appreciate each and every one of you. We thank God for you. And uh, God is faithful. Yes, he is. I said God is faithful. Amen. 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 Even when other people don't do what they're supposed to do, God is faithful. Welcome, Amen. welcome, welcome. God is faithful. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I know it's Labor Day weekend. And there's a lot going on. People probably have their minds on cookouts and gatherings and, and, and other things. And, and that's fine in this rightful place. But God is important. Yeah. Not only is God important, having him in your life is important. And then not only having him in your life is important, but being faithful to him is important. Amen. God bless you. Being faithful to him is very, very, very important. Yes, sir. And then to add to that, uh, doing what he wants you to do when everything is working against you, that's a whole nother level. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like you love God. He's in your life. And you're trying to do everything you can to serve God. And then you got all these factors and all these Situations that seem like they just keep coming up to try to prevent you from doing that. Amen? Amen. And that's when you find out a lot about yourself. It, because, you know, we always kind of wondered if there was a real devil growing up. You, you know, when you're growing up, you joke about the devil, you joke about, you, you talk about God. But I guarantee you, you pray for salvation and get saved, you'll find out he's real. Yes, sir. You'll find out God is real, and you'll find out the devil is real. That's right. Now, we're not trying to bring him in glory, but I'm just trying to get you to understand that this is not a game that we're in, and that serving God is a real thing. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And fighting against the devil is a real thing, too. And he's real. His cohorts are real. And the minute you decide that you're going to be a Christian, you'll find out. Because think about it, before you got saved or before you started coming to church, it was no big deal. You didn't even really think about it. Whatever you did, you just did. But now when you start trying to resist, uh, uh, hello, or when you start trying to, uh, uh, to, to switch up on how you go about your business, all of a sudden, that reality begins to set in. Like, man, this is a real thing. You know, serving God and, and endeavoring to do the right thing and Trying to get my mind right. Because when you've grown up a certain way, you all, you know what you know. And you lean toward that because that's how you go about your business. But when you get saved, God gives you a new mindset. But along with that mindset, those behaviors got to come along with it too. That's where, the, you know, the mindset and the behavior, you got to line that up. That's where the faithfulness to God in your prayer life, in Bible reading and studying and coming to church will help you to line that, that new mindset you got with your, your everyday lifestyle, activities, changing the way you use them. It, it's work. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But it's work, isn't it? It ain't no joke. It, it's, it's no joke. Amen. To, you know, endeavoring to not only have your mind right, but your life right. Amen. Because it's one thing to think, it, it's another thing to do it. Isn't it? <laughs> can I get a witness? Amen. Can I get, can, would you at least grunt at me? <laughs> do like this, like, grunt, Pastor. Uh, <laughs> we're having a good time. We're having a good time. Come on in, God bless you. Amen. I'm just trying to make sure that you understand. Um, I don't want people coming to church just to come to church. Yes. I don't want people attending the services 
let's grow the church, let's get, let's get the church big so we can all walk around with our chest poked out and brag about what church we go to, who your pastor is, who your congregation is, where you go to church, uh, where I go to church is better than where you go. Hey, that, that kind of stuff is not going to get you where you need to go. Amen. What's going to get you where you need to go is letting God change your mindset and then also change your way of life. Amen. Amen. That's what we're after. Amen. Amen. I, I came to God because I realized that my life needed to change. Yes. Because I know the direction I was headed in was not going to work for me. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Amen. And so when you understand that and you begin to work on that, that's where the reality of, like I told you, having a change of mind and then also changing your behavior. Those things have to come together. The Bible said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So you got to get the mind of Christ first and then begin to work on changing and growing and, and maturing and, and, and getting better. That's, that's where the real life of a Christian really is. Amen. Line it up with a new mindset. Uh, Amen. I said, line it up yes. with a new mindset. Oh, you, Amen. I, I, you Amen. know, I just, I'm, we're, we're just trying to help. We're just trying to get you from point A to point B to C with God's help, with God's strength. And, and we and we endeavor to tell you the truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. In other words, whatever it costs you to have the truth paid. Are you with me? Amen. Does that resonate with you this morning? Yes, sir. Whatever it costs you to have the truth, know the truth, and do the truth, do that. Sometimes it will cost you your friends. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Sometimes it will cost you a lot of other things. But what's it worth to you? You're standing with God or you're standing with people? Amen. So anyway, we welcome you here for Labor Day. And I'm so thankful. I'm so very thankful for God. Amen. Because he has given me the honor and the privilege to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I just know that I didn't think in a million years growing up that God would ever send me to Pittsburgh. I didn't. Not that I didn't like Pittsburgh. Not that. It's just that, you know, you never know what serving God will take you. And, and now that we're here, and now that we've become a part of the community, um, God blessed my wife and I with something the other day. Um, we have been, this is not some kind of things we always share, but I'm going to share this with you for just for sake of conversation. Uh, my wife and I uh, uh, was uh, sleeping on a bed that wasn't really comfortable, and, but we, would, we did it. We just did it because we were where God wanted us to be. We were just willing to be uncomfortable until God blessed us with what we need. Amen. And we've slept on floors, we've slept whatever. I mean, we do whatever. Amen. We've slept on mattresses on the floor. Amen. I'm not proud like that. You know what I'm saying? My most important thing and her most important thing is being where God wants you to be. The rest of the stuff will take care of itself. But you got you, you got to make up in your mind what you want to do. So we got here. And we have a nice, we have a nice bed that we had, and we couldn't even fit it up the steps. It was so crazy. We got it, we couldn't fit it up the steps. And so we had to give it away. Right? We had to give it away. And seven years later, we're just now getting a different bed. And my wife like, give me some room, give me some room, give me get on, get on, get out of the way. And everything we had to kind of not, you know. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I'm saying. And, um, and uh, so, and everything. So, but anyway, 
So God finally blessed us with a nicer bed. So I rented a U-Haul truck to bring it to the house. And I, hello, brother. Hello, hey, how you doing? Hello, a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'm just stressing That's you, right there. And uh, a little more of you. Yes, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Amen. Gonna be with her till she gets used okay, to it. Okay, she's gonna go. Yeah, that's cool. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, that's all right. It'll be just fine. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want them to be able to. Uh, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be all right. But anyway, so we 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 slept on that. Then we had to do God bless. The minute people saw that you all drunk, you know how it is. Oh my God, you moving, you moving. No, 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 no. You're not. But I'm telling you, God knows. God knows. Amen. They were so worried. You know, it's a blessing when your neighbors like you. Hello? Yes, it's a blessing when your neighbors like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, my one neighbor was walking down, he saw that truck. He like, oh. he was like, whoo. Man, I'm so glad because you don't ever know who's gonna move in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but anyway, I'm just trying to tell you. That God will bless you and God will, uh, will, will, will meet your needs. Amen. 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 You got to put God first yeah. in your life. Amen. And so this goes back to what I was telling you. What are you willing to do to have the truth and to know the truth and to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? Amen. We were willing to do that for seven years. Amen? But it, whatever God wants, right? Whatever God wants. So, we appreciate you being here. It's Labor Day weekend. Uh, I have a, um, a particular message that I want to share with you this morning. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I know, like I said, I know there's a lot going on. I know people are celebrating and doing different things. But God is still God. God is still God. And we have to make sure that God is important in our lives. We have to make sure of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter what we're doing, God has to be first. And so I want to share something with you. Um, there we go. Uh, that that uh, the, the Lord laid upon my heart that I hope and pray will be a blessing to you. Okay? I'd like for you to, uh, we'll receive the tithes and offerings a little later, okay? Um, we'll receive the tithes and offerings now. Uh, and all Christians pay tithes and give an offerings. And those that are watching online, we provided the uh, online giving and the church address and all the important information that a person would need if you wanted to give and support our ministry. We thank God for that. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. If you miss it, those of you that did not come this week to those two special services we had, they will be uploaded today on our YouTube channel. And all of our other, Reverend Steele taught Bible study last night. He did a wonderful job. Um, the most wonderful thing in the world. He taught on John 3.16 last night. It was a real blessing. Yes, sir. And now go look at it. We're going to upload all those things today on our, YouTube, on our YouTube channel. The two services that you missed, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, will be uploaded. You can go back on Facebook. You can go on Facebook and look at them if you like. And uh, I preached about um, uh, Ruth on Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, I preached about Elijah. Quality without compromise. Right? I preach about quality without compromise, Ruth, quality without compromise, Elijah. And, uh, and on and on, on, there's many, many church services on there. So go back and look at them and subscribe and do all that stuff. You know, get, let's get our um, subscription up and all that kind of stuff. You know, all the social media stuff. You know, just tell your friends about it, tell them to do the same thing. Amen. If you want to give a million dollars, go ahead and do that too. <laughs> right. uh, Praise 
mercy on us. What's a, really in this day and age, a million dollars is really not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. That's a lot of money, but not in big, big, big picture. Um, you can go through a million dollars real easy. It wouldn't really take a whole lot to do that. Even if you invested, bought some property, and, and paid all of that, I mean, it could go real quick if you, if you weren't careful. But at the same time, if you went about it, But when you have 
have a wife and children and you act like a grown man, it will motivate you. Yes, sir. Hello? Amen. I never understood a man that didn't want to work. What kind of nonsense is that? And what planet did you come from? A grown man that will not get up out of the bed and go to work. I don't even, I can't even relate to that. It's the epitome of sorriness and laziness that a man can look at his wife or girlfriend or significant others or whatever this stuff y'all call it. And don't feel responsible. Can look at your children in the face and know they need to eat and know they need clothes and know they need a roof over their head. How can you rest in peace? I don't understand that. I'll never forget what it was like the first time that doctor put that kid in my head. Something happened to me that I can't explain to me. Yes, amen. It changed me. It made me realize, man, this is serious. Yes, sir. I don't understand why you don't buy milk and pampers and have to take the baby to the doctor and get up in the night and have to say about the sick babies. But we'll take a dog to the vet and we'll walk a dog all around so we can look like we strong. Lord, let me get on top of the business there. Care more about that than you do your baby, your child. But it's the truth. Because we all about our image. Uh, we, wanna, we, we, we care more about our image. Mm -hmm. My image was always about my family. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, Amen. Brother God. My one little girl, when I would come home from work, it seems like somehow she just knew what time I was supposed to get home. She'd be standing there, she'd be standing in there in the screen door. And when, and when I pull up, my wife just had to grab her to keep her from running out there because she didn't want to get hit by the truck. And she'd be like, Daddy's home, Daddy's home. <laughs> this is just one of them. I got stories from But And so I would walk up the steps to go. And once I opened the door, she would just run and go dark and lay down in the spot the way I used to like to go lay down and take a nap. <laughs> and when I got to the room, she would say, Daddy, I got your spot, spot. I got your spot, spot. I'd be so tired. <laughs> yes, Lord. But the feeling
was showing him what it was like to go to work. Yeah. And he was just a little bitty thing. And I would take my son with me. And I showed him how to work. And I showed him how to clock in. And I showed him yes. how I, what I did when I got there. And I let him ride in the truck with me. And I, saw, I let him see me deal with people. And work and, and do all these things. And on and on and on. Yeah. And why? Because it's just something about it. Work is good for the soul. Amen. Yes, work will keep you out of prison. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Amen. Work will keep you out of prison. Amen. And I'm not here to be critical. I'm not here to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not here to find fault. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I don't, please don't take it that way. I'm just trying to get you to understand God brought you here to get you up. God brought you here to get you up. To give you a change of mind. God brought you here to let you know that there's a better way. God brought you here because he knew that there was somebody that would love you and that would tell you the truth. It might not always be popular, but it's what's right. You see, truth is not popular, but truth must be lived and must be practiced. I said truth to get you through. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Paul writing to the people of Thessalonica, verse 3, he said, Remember it without ceasing, your work of love. I mean, work of faith. That's where I got stuck with it. And what, now what's all this? Notice these, he said, work of faith. In other words, faith is not easy. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Come on to church with me now. Yes, sir. I said, faith is not easy. Believing God is not easy. Trusting God is not easy. But as you practice it, and as you put it to work in your life, because having faith takes Having faith takes work. Having faith takes uh, uh, ongoing uh, work and labor and effort and service. It's not easy to believe God. If you think I'm lying, try it. Try it. The work of faith and what? Labor of love. Labor of love. These two words in the same sentence. Labor of love. All right? And patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to point something out to you in this scripture. Now, it said work of faith, labor of love. And it says patience of hope. You know what the word patience means, don't you? Cheerful endurance. That means putting up or dealing with whatever issues have been bitted out to you, but doing it with the right attitude. Waiting on God with the right attitude. In other words, God, I'm waiting on you because I know, because I'm waiting on you, I know I have hope. Because I'm waiting on you, I know you're going to come through. Because I'm waiting on you, I know you, you're faithful. Because I'm waiting on you, you have a good track record. Amen. I'm waiting on you because I know you're going to be honest with yes. me. I'm waiting on you because I know you're going to do me right. Yeah. I'm waiting on you. And even though I'm getting weary, I know if I just hold on, that it's going to be all right. That everything is going to be fine. Amen. I call for my boys I grew up with. Right before church. We all grew up in Bankhead together. Bankhead court together. He lost his mom, his brother, and now he just lost his sister, just all in a row. So I called him. I said, D. His name is Dwight. I called him D. I said, D, I just want you to hear my voice. I said, I just wanted you to hear my voice. And, and I said, I can't even begin to relate to what you've been going through and your whole family been going through, but I just want you to know I'm here. I just want you to know I love you, man. 
I just want we don't got to the point where we tell each other we love each other. That's right. That's right. You know when you go out there, tell no dude what you love him. <laughs> but now we say we love each other. That's right. I don't care which one I'm talking to. I, before we hang up, say I love you, man. Yeah, I love you too, man. I'll let you tomorrow. I'll let you forever. You know what I'm saying? You get, you grow up. You get better. Amen. You you begin to understand that there's more important things in life than they include. Yeah. There's more important things in life than strutting around like a proud peacock. Amen. Amen. You see somebody laying in a casket, it'll get real to you. Oh, yeah. You see them open that ground up and lower them down, and that thing is hitting and banging up against the side of the ground. It'll get your attention and make you understand. It's time to get to understand. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. I'm preaching on labor of love. Amen. <laughs> labor Amen. of love. Uh, if you, the key to serving God and doing it successfully, you got to understand that it takes work. Yes, sir. Uh, it yes, sir. takes work. It's not easy. That means effort is going to have to be put forth. Are you with me? Because we haven't been saved all our lives. We haven't been in church all our lives. And so we come to God, we get saved, we're immediately behind the eight ball. And that, what that means is that we got catching up to do, so we don't have time to play games. Yeah. We don't have time to fool around. We got work to do. We got praying to do. Yeah. We got studying to do. We got more to church to do. And the more you come, the better you get. Yeah. The more you pray, the better you get. The more you get your nose in this book, the better you'll get. Yeah. But you got to understand that. When it gets hard, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. When it gets difficult, it's okay. When things in life are not going to work out, it gets okay. Yes, sir. That means yeah. you're right where you need to be. It's not supposed to be easy. That's right. I said it's not supposed to be easy. You think the devil's just going to lay down and let you serve God without fighting you? You think the devil's just going to lay down and let you tiptoe in the heaven without never fighting you? Without never trying to discourage you? Without never trying to tempt you? Without ever trying to do anything? But you got to serve God with, with a made-up mind. Amen. You got to serve God with yes. the understanding that today is a grind. Tomorrow is going to be a grind. But you know what? You can't cheat it. You can't cheat the grind. Reading your Bible every day is a grind. Praying every day is a grind. Coming to church when you know you're supposed to is a grind. But it's a job. It's a work that I'm willing to do. Because serving God is work. And not only is this work, it's a labor of love. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So would you pray real quick, please? Thank you, God. Observe the first Monday in every September, we celebrate what is called Labor Day. It is an annual celebration of the social and economic achievements of American people that like to stay at home and not work. No, that's not what it is. <laughs> Celebrate the achievements and, and, and celebration of the social and economic achievements of the American workers. <laughs> the holiday is rooted in the late 19th century when labor activists pushed for a federal holiday to recognize the many contributions workers have made to the America, the American strength. Amen. We are who we are because of people who work. 
Yes. Let's just be honest about it. Yes, now, you always going to have people that can't work for various reasons. That's understandable. Medical, mental, tragic. People get hurt and they become, people get injured and can't work. And things of that nature. We understand that. Okay? We understand that there are, there's always going to be people that cannot participate in the labor force. But I'm thankful for those that do and can. Amen. It's something, it's, it, there's something about America, even though we have a lot of negative and a lot of, you know, America has slavery and all these other things and all in all, that a lot of this stuff needs to be corrected. A lot of things still need to continue to change. And we thank God for, for what progress has been made. We know there's still more work needs to be done. We understand that. We don't want to turn this into a political rally. But at the same time, we need to celebrate the fact, look all around this country. There's job. They're trying to get people in. Bonus this, bonus that, bonus this, bonus that. Why? Because there's all kinds of jobs out there. But the American worker is the backbone of this country. Yes. The construction worker, the electrician, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the home health care people. And the, 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 the uh, uh, emergency medical people, yes. uh, you know, the EMS people, and on and on and on, the policemen, the firemen, and I know people, there's issues, but they're still part of it too. Uh, the, uh, the ones that do, they, do their job the way they're supposed to do it. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. Let's just make sure we, uh, the, we, we're talking about people who do their jobs, people who are proud of their work they do. They go to work every day, they punch in, and they're proud of their work. They put their effort in. I don't care if it's digging ditches or operating on people or, or, or people coming into the emergency room, shot up and cut up, and all these other different things. There's all kinds of things, political people, and all from the president on down, and on and on and on. The labor is the backbone of this country. Yes. And so, on June 28th of 1894, Congress passed an act making the first Monday in September of each year a legal holiday celebrating the labors of this country. People who have worked and have achieved and on and on then uh, people who work hard and they reach retirement age and on and on. I think about my brother my brother just turned 64 when he's the oldest in our family. He just turned 64. He's getting ready to retire soon. Amen. But he, he, he's had a very, very difficult life. Yeah. My brother did have a very, very difficult life. But he got himself together, got him, got, got him an a, a excellent job. He's a supervisor yeah. at the hospital now and where he works. And he works for FEMA. After he had been in trouble all his life. He had been in and out of trouble all his life, prison, trouble. But he got, he got out there last time. He's, he, he's got a great job. He's working for FEMA and on and on and on. And, and so I think about things like that, how in this country that you can turn your life around. Yeah. Amen. And, and many of us, either we've experienced it or we know people like that, how that it can happen. It can work. We, we do. We still live in a great country. Yes. To where you want to, you can turn your life around. Amen. If you want to. Amen. But the key to the whole thing is labor. It's labor, right? Everything that we do in life is work. Relationship, marriage is work. I know you don't think it is. You think it's what you see on TV. <laughs> no. It's more to it than that, right? You see these people on TV, they play that friendly music, and they kiss at the end of the movie, and they live happily uh, ever after, and all this kind of stuff. But marriage is work. Yes, sir. I love my wife. She loves me. But we have to work at it. And you have to work at what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? You have to work. Raising children is work. Oh, yes. Hello. Yes, sir. My mother told me one time, she said, having children is more than a notion. Yes. Amen. Okay. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. And uh, taking care of a household, keeping a, keeping a car on this work. 
Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Just making sure it's maintained, making sure you put gas in it, the oil, the uh, here in Pennsylvania, you got to, every stinking year, you got to go and have it yes, inspected, and then you don't know, man, you got to do this. We can't pass it until you do this and do that, and all this kind of stuff. Everything is work. <laughs> Everything is labor. In it. You go to work, it's work. <laughs> labor is physical or mental effort. To exert oneself in a sustained effort for a purpose or a necessity or whatever the case may be. A sustained effort, mental or physical, put in. It's the same thing in Christianity. It's the same thing. You think Christianity is not work? You think being saved is not work? You think Serving God is not work. What did Paul just say? Work of faith. <laughs> uh, labor of love. Amen. It's work loving people. Mm -hmm. It's work practicing faith. It's labor practicing faith. But I just wanted y'all to know this morning that serve God. But understand it's a labor of love. Temptation you 
been involved in, uh, maybe some lifestyle you've been practicing, uh, or whatever the case may be, Jesus said, uh, come unto me all ye that labor uh, and are heavy laden, uh, and I'll give you rest. Stay with it. Keep coming to church. There's times you're going to come to church and you ain't going to understand a word I say. Um, there's, times you're gonna, there's times people come to church, they get mad, they get upset, they disagree, and on and on and on. There's no way you're going to, every time you come to church, everything's going to be what you like. It's not that way at work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that way in your relationships. Some days in your relationship is cool. And then other days you're like, I'm mad with you today, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you be mad with people you don't even know why you do. My mom said my, my grandfather used to be like that. She would call, uh, she would call him and say, Dad, how you doing? I'm mad with you. Like, <laughs> and then he'll call back and say, I'm all right, okay, baby, I'm all right. Uh, you know, human, human beings, we're some crazy people. <laughs> oh, Lord. But serving God is work. You got to work at it. Some days you're up, some days you're down. Some days you, sure. you're, you're challenged in every aspect of your life, but you, no. but you keep going because you love God. Yeah. You keep going even though you don't understand. You keep going even though something work against you. You keep going even though you're down in the back. You keep going because trouble is at the doorstep. You keep going even though you got a phone call you didn't like. You keep going even though you look at your bank account and say, God, I don't know what the world I'm going to do. I got more month than I got money. And on and on and on. But you keep on going because you know serving God is worth And God come in 
And all he's trying to do is save you. All he's trying to do is cleanse you. All he's trying to do is help you get in the right position. All he's trying to do is help you out. And you're giving God a hard time. You're fighting God. And you're resisting God. And you're bucking against what he's trying to do. He'll say, okay, let me give you my son. Let me give you some of my mercy. Let me give you some of my grace. But all you're thinking about is the pain you're in. All you're thinking about is the streets you want to run. All you're thinking about is that person that you're with. All you're thinking about is what you're doing. And all God is trying. Why are you, why are you frustrated at God? Why are you mad at God? Why are you taking it all out on him? He's just there to help you. He's just there to see you through. He's just there to help make you better. You didn't like that analogy, did you? But it makes too much sense. <laughs> it makes way too much sense. Come on to me, all you that are that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. That's a guarantee. Isn't it? Yes, sir. That's a guarantee. It's a lot different than that stuff on TV. They try to sell you some medicine and then tell you all the stuff that can go wrong real fast. Yeah. This is a disclaimer. <laughs> it can kill you in a moment. Uh, it can give you a stroke. But they say that real fast just yep. so they can justify what they said. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't have it in his cross. Uh -uh. Um, he said, come unto oh, me. Hallelujah. Come to him this yes. morning. Come to him this morning. Uh -huh. Because serving God is a labor of love. Yes. Uh, he knows you have burdens. Uh, he knows yes. you have cares and concerns. Uh, but come to God. Uh, and if you have believed upon me, if you're serving God, he knows that you have things that you're dealing with and that you're going through. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't care if you messed up. I don't care if you've done wrong. I don't care if you uh, disobeyed God. He said, come to me. Yes. Uh, Amen. Uh, come to me. Amen. He said, well, Pastor, I messed up. Pastor, I said something I should have said. Pastor, I stayed out all night. Pastor, I violated this, and I done this, and I did that. You the one God wants. Yes, sir. Come to him this morning. Amen. Come to him this morning. Uh, because serving God is a labor of love. God loves you this morning. God cares about you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how if you messed up or not. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life. God cares about you. He said, you, you notice he didn't put no speed. He said, come to me. Just come to me. Just come. Come unto me. I love that song to God be the glory. For what good things he has done. Amen. Amen. Come to him this morning. Jesus. Amen. To God. You see, the devil wants you to wallow in your sorrows. The devil wants you to wallow in your mistakes. He wants you to wallow in the fact that you, to make you think that God's not going to help you. But that's not true. Um, oh, God. Oh, yes. God, I know I'm not all I ought to be. God, I know I don't always follow like I should. God, I know I don't always obey, but the fact that you showed up this morning, but the fact that you put an effort in, serving God is work. The fact that you got up on Labor Day weekend, when a lot of people said, I'm not going, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but you got up and you came. Amen. I said you came. Amen. That tells God a lot. Stand with me this Hallelujah. morning. Hallelujah.
How about it right now as you wait? How about 